और राइट है स्टडी हियर एंड वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एक्साइटेड विजुअल इफेक्ट ट्यूटोरियल और विजुअल इफेक्ट इज ऑन द सेम प्लेस बट टूडे वी विल एड एबस्ट्रेक एनिमेशन यूजिंग जियोमेट्री नोट एंड वी विल क्रिएट सम कूल इफेक्ट सो वी विल स्टार्ट जस्ट लाइक वी डू बिफोर लाइक वी फर्स्ट वी यू नो सिंपली क्रिएट अ न्यू कॉम्पोजिशन अपलाई थ्री डी कैमरा ट्रैकर एंड वी ट्रैक दिस If you are a beginner, I will highly suggest check out some of my other tutorials where I also included how you can create all these different like proper tracking, how you can solve some issues, and how you will transfer this data inside Blender. So because today I am also touching a new topic, that's why I am going to focus more on geometry node. So the process is very basic. Just drag your clip inside After Effect, then transfer your camera plane and all the nulls inside Blender using A to Blender add-on. and fix the scale and orientation and that's it and we will build our geometry node animation now and guys the reason why i am making the tutorial is i raise a poll about what do you want to learn next and a lot of vote goes to the blender vfx with geometry node that's why i am making this tutorial and i will also uh, give a shout out to this uh, amazing guy ducky 3d he has some amazing geometry node tutorials on his channel so kindly go and check this The next thing which I want to do is I will just press S and I will select the plane first. I'll press S and I will increase the scale and I can press T. Select the move tool and I'll just move it a little bit like here. Our base visual effects scene is pretty much ready now. I only have to add you know 3D stuff. So first I'll simply create a new UV sphere. I'll just put it on here. Solo these things so I can only focus here. I will press M and move this into a new collection called Geo Animation. and uh, i will make some room over here okay so first i will go here and i will choose geometry node editor so i will believe you are using geometry node first time okay so go over here and choose geometry node editor and you will see a dialog like this just like we do in shader editor let's select our sphere and click on this new button and it will create a new geometry node where there is a input and this is the output so currently this sphere is our input and this is the only thing which available for the output we are not adding anything in between this you know rope or node so basically geometry node is a different kind of a workflow to do any task so let's suppose if uh, for the you know quick and basic uh, explanation what i will play next so let's suppose in the previous time if you will select a sphere and if you want to move it you will press g and if you will uh, you know move it so if you will focus on the location so if i press g so actually i am moving the location in 3d space right so just like here i can you know quickly go and change these things and in geometry node what i can do i can simply search a node just like i search uh, any shader so i will press shift a and search a node called transform node and i'll plug in between of input and output so now we have something so if i will move you can see i am moving this so this is yeah this is all about the geometry node like if you want to move things you have to add a node if you want to do any task you have to add nodes okay so for now i'm going to delete this and i am also new to this uh, you know geometry node stuff so let's quickly build some so first i will add a node call mesh to volume so it will turn my mesh into a volume and volume means like volumetric fog or smoke fire or any kind of a cloud okay next i will add a effect called distribute point in volume so there are multiple ways like what i can do even more like i can simply plug this over here so basically my main goal is to add some more you know simple simple and small and some big sphere all around this sphere i can also simply add a instance on point over here and i need a instance for that i will add a simple thing call uh, like icosphere and i will simply put it here and now i will if i will plug this mesh into instance so you will see something is happening over here so right now i will just down the radius we have some smaller size of icosphere i can also increase the subdivision so you can see this process is very very convenient like let's suppose in general if you will add a icosphere here so you will see a dialog like this and if you want to increase the subdivision you will do right over here if you will click anywhere in in your scene you have lost that feature so in geometry node i can you know increase my if you focus over here subdivision any time i can go back any time uh, like everything is not permanent over here i can change any time i can come back any time and i can change anything 
so this is the things which i can easily do the reason why i added these two nodes because let me plug and let me show you what i mean so now you can see i have a control like i can you know place my points randomly just like if i'll place it before before this is like you know very symmetrical but now i have a control to you know easily i can customize the density i can also change this to the grid so now i have the sphere let me press one but let me press uh, point two so but in you can see in a grid way so this way i have a, a lot of control so that's why i added this here i have to change these three numbers all the time to you know increase the density of the particles over here so the easy fix is like i can add a value node and i can plug this value into this spacing and if i press point one i have the same thing so here i can easily control all three at the same time so i hope this is not uh, you know too complicated for you so yeah we are pretty much it we are almost done but the thing is i want to customize it even more just like i want to customize the you know particle size over here so this is the scale let me press point one so you can see it's changing the all particle size at once so i will add a effect called map range and map range is basically giving a value from zero to one and in between we will control this with a you know some kind of a texture like a wave texture over here and if i'll plug this color into the value you will see something is happening like we have some uh, like bigger particles then we have a smaller then so in this case this is the full one and this is pretty much like zero or something uh, like that so if you will see the number to minimum and maximum these are the numbers which i can control and it will control the size so you can see how convenient is this whole workflow is so what i will do first i will change this to the ring and also i will change this to the spherical and if i'll go to the scale i can also scale up and down so basically i am scaling this texture size and based of the this texture it's affecting the scale so i will increase the minimum to a bit more and i will increase the maximum or just down the maximum a bit so basically these are the things which you can play and get your desired result i can also add a effect called color ramp and basically i will just like in shader editor we you know crush the black and white values even more so this is what i am doing and i can change stuff like i, I want to you know make less particle i i am okay with this if i want to add you know a lot of particles i will go like this and then i can just down the scale even more so i have you know much more you know visible pattern going on into the sphere so these uh, this looks pretty good till here the next thing which i want to control is like rotation I, if i want i can simply rotate in a you know like z direction you can see all of this every single particle is rotating but just like we did here we can also do it here and that way it will customize the rotation in every you know direction i want to rotate it but from here so i will add a transform node over here and here i can you know rotate it any direction like but this is not rotating the particle it's rotating the whole sphere so i want to add more random movements so i'll simply create a new slider and change this to the timeline what is the first frame and on here i will simply add the same value node because i want to control xyz rotation at once so i'll add a value node over here and plug this value into the rotation and now if i'll add you can see it's randomly adding values into xyz and this is what actually i want so i'll press i and it will add a keyframe over here if you are not able to see press a and you will able to see these keyframes okay select this go to the very end and just increase the number like 12 and i'll press i and it will add a keyframe i'll press a again i'll select this and press a to select all these keyframes i'll press t and make it linear so it will you know play like this so this looks pretty good i want to also add animation into this particle and this is the cool thing like we are going to you know change the scale so if you play the offset you can see we are changing the scale so i'll go to the first frame and i'll press i and i will add a you know keyframe on the phase offset i will go to the very end and let me add like like 90 and i'll press i and press a and select this node and you will be able to see so you can see a very subtle movement going on and this looks good for now so 
let me go to the camera movement and press slash to on solo and let's go to the camera movement and uh, this looks good this is pretty like sci-fi stuff but let's go one step more further first i want to add amazing note called seed smooth just like we select any object inside uh, our object mode and we right click and make it seed smooth so that way i will also add a seed smooth seed 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 said smooth over here and you can see i want to add more movement like we added two movement till here just like one rotation and also one in the wave but in last i want to add one more node called displace modifier actually this is a displace modifier and make sure to move this modifier before geometry node so it will affect first first it will affect let me disable the geometry node so first it will affect the sphere and after that geometry node will apply so let me click on this new and it will add a new texture go into the texture properties and choose a cloud and you can see now we have a more random and weird stuff going on here you can see and the this tutorial is based on this abstract stuff so we can keep adding more randomization this is the size you can see i can play the size and based on this size it will affect this whole stuff so i will maybe i will add 0.5 over here this is pretty good you can also change to the marble or you can change any any other uh, you know node which you like like there is a vernoy node you can also if you uh, if you want you can also add it so yeah this is it uh, i mean this is not it this is the option which you can tweak if you'll come back to this modifier tab this is the like you can see the strength which you can play over time so let me add one or maybe I can just go very zero in the beginning. So let's press I and it will add a keyframe in the very beginning. And let's go to the very end. And here I will just simply add, let's add five. Or let me add like four. And let's add I and it will add a keyframe. Press A, T and make it linear. You can see we have this, you know, something uh, amazing stuff going on. And it's, it's also growing over the time. So this is really, really good still you have option you can come back and if you want more noise you can you know just keep make it down and it will look like this so if you go to the modifier select the geometry node you can come back anywhere in any node and you can play and you know add stuff so for now i will control us to save this project now let's move to the rendering and lighting part and let's see how it looks so i will go to the this uh world tab and i will load our 360 environment so go to the environment texture open and i will load it let's go to the rendered mode and let's change this to the cycles and let's change this to the gpu and uh, probably this is not the exact place uh, i mean this is the exact place but i showed the video over here so let me go to the shader editor and uh, let's change this to the world and also over here i'll press ctrl t and just rotate it a bit so this is not exactly the same but it's pretty much uh, you know kind of uh, that what i can do more because in our scene there is there you can see there is a sun so i can also mix this so i will simply duplicate this background but before that let's add a mix shader and let's plug in between let's duplicate this background put it here and plug this here and also let's make a search a add a sky texture over here and plug this color into this color so now we have also this uh, background and also our sun so you know we set our background like environment map so now i want to go to the rendered mode go to the film and enable transparent node so now we have our sun you can see this if you focus on this table now you can see where is our sun how this shadow is behaving so we will try to do the same so first we will just rotate our sun also i will add the sun evolution like 30 25 first and maybe 35 so this kind maybe kind of work so let me select this plane and uh, let's move to the object mode and let's add a new material and this will be our ground and i'll quickly import the let's import the same video into this shader editor and let's plug this color into the base color of this ground texture and press ctrl t and let's plug this window into the vector so now we have the same you know uh, ground going on over here let's increase the roughness high and also enable cycle auto refresh and move the uh, i mean increase the frame 1000 and you can see still this is too bright so i'll go to the world properties and here is the sun so this is the strength so i'll make it 0.5 maybe 0.1 so we have you know uh, like 
good stuff going on i think i have to rotate the sun even more so you can see this is the perfect example like this is creating the highlight so sun is obviously uh, like like in this place go to the object mode go to the visibility and enable shadow catcher this looks pretty good for now i will just change this to the timeline but before that i i also want to so actually i also want to add some you know shader into our material i mean geometry node for for that what i have to do i will select our geometry node like this sphere go to the material and create a new material and this will be our zero let's come back here and let's add a effect called set material plug it in last and just choose geo and now we have geo material applied here for changing the material what i have to do i will just change this to the object and i will select this sphere now we have geo material assigned over here and if i change the color you can see it's affecting properly here so i will add a effect called here I will simply add an ambient occlusion node and I'll plug this A into the base color and you will start seeing this. The next thing which I want to add is like a color ramp so that I can also assign color in both like in this dark area and also in the bright area. So for the bright area I will go with something like little orange kind of stuff and in dark area I will leave at the moment. Here I will increase the subsurface scattering so we will have some interesting effect going on here and it's up to you like you can you can select this and disable this overlays so i can focus and you can also down the roughness if you want you can increase the roughness so basically it's up to you how you want to you know make this stuff this stuff i will select this black and i will just add some like so i will leave this uh, and this i will leave it like this for now i will increase the clear coat full so it will add some uh, you know reflection now i want to move back into our geometry node and i will just move back this scene okay so if you want to uh, you know increase the size so you just have to first uh, i want to make the you know like i will just go here and let's add point one so that we can work little fast i'll select this sphere i'll press scale s and it will scale it fully let's make it timeline so you can see how you know easy to control everything like i apply the scale and you can see how these things are very easy and good looking to control and there are uh, definitely a lot of more stuff which you can play but this is the basic idea which even you can go to the next level just by selecting this shift d to duplicate and uh, maybe you can just scale it down and just control a and apply the scale shift d and just place it anywhere in the scene or you can also just come back and here you can just change the you know like mid level or definitely just play with more different intensity and different kind of a texture and if you want to you know just change the geometry node stuff you can also you know just click here just just like we duplicate the any shader like if i'll select this and if i'll just click here it will duplicate this and now i can just change any values over here like i want to you know make this a little more bigger if i'll just focus over here and see this has more you know more big blocks blocks i'll also select this one and just duplicate this and it has even more big blocks you can see so we have a lot of control like how i want to you know optimize this and this is why geometry node is really really cool guys i will highly suggest recreate this and also even play even more according to your need how you want and I hope you know how to render just like you can simply just change all these values to like 2, 5, 6 and this is pretty much it. Go to the output directory and here and then assign where you want to export all the animation and just go to the render and render animation and it will render the color and shadow pass in combined and you are pretty much good to go. So yeah, this is the final result and thanks for watching this video. Thanks for loving me. I am NPS3D and I will see you next time with an amazing tutorial. I hope you learn something new today. So. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you. Bye-bye.